We are now joined, in fact, via Zoom by the Home Affairs Minister, Dr. Erol Muzwaledi, to give us a response, really, to that judgment coming out of the Free State High Court this morning, having, um, of course, uh, declined or dismissed Dr. Makutumana's application that uh, her arrest in Tanzania was unlawful. Uh, the Minister joins us this morning. Minister, a good morning to you, and thank you so much for joining us. I think, uh, first things first, your initial reaction to this judgment that we heard just moments ago. Well, good afternoon. Good afternoon to you uh, and the listeners and the viewers. Look, uh, we are very, very happy. Uh, right from the beginning, you remember that Home Affairs was not cited. And we, we smelled that an injustice is about to happen simply on the basis of technicalities. That's why as Home Affairs, we fought very hard uh, to be included in this case and to be cited. And uh, we, we are now happy that uh, what we have done has eventually paid off uh, because uh, the, the, the injustice that was going to happen of releasing somebody who has done what uh, she has done on the basis of technicalities was going to be a very sad day for, for South Africa. Here is a lady, a medical doctor, Nohal, who's, who went around stealing corpses, as it is alleged. Uh, including that of Berlin, whose, whose family is still mourning. Mm. And, and on the base of technicalities, she wants to believe she's innocent, that her rights are being trampled upon. What about all the other people who were victims in this case? So we are very glad, uh, 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 extremely so, that uh, the, the justice prevailed. Yeah. And, and, and Minister, the other issue that came out of the court as well is um, that she had applied for a lawyer and that her lawyer was going to challenge her detention. Um, this is in Tanzania. Does Minister know any of that information? We, we don't know about it, Aldrin, and we suspect, as the judge did, that uh, this was second thought. This was an afterthought, I mean to say. Because in the original Avidavid, I mean, it's very crucial information. In the original Avidavid, it was not there. They were responding to our Avidavid, seeing what we have got on the Avidavid. Then they realized they must add something. And that's why they added this issue of looking for a judge there. I personally doubt that it ever happened. It's, some, it's an afterthought that was just thrown in after they've seen our Avidavid as home affairs. And uh, uh, I mean, as the government, because there were affidavits also from the police services and the NPA. Yeah. Uh, Minister, there, there is, of course, uh, the point made by the judge as he handed down that judgment uh, that uh, uh, really, if Nandipa was to take this, uh, uh, Nandipa Makutumani were to take this issue forward, she'd have to um, then approach the courts in Tanzania. I mean, what's the communication that you've had with Tanzanian authorities as well as they've watched this application uh, play out, if at all? No, no, no. We, we never had any communication with them except asking for particular documents, which they, they really uh, uh, generously sent, affidavits and particular documents. Other than that, we never had any discussion with them. And as it was said, Tanzanians were within their right to decide what must happen on their soil and what must happen to people who illegally enter their country. And we have taken from them and we believe it was within their rights to do so. And we agree with the judge that anybody who wants to challenge that must go to Tanzania to challenge it because South African courts cannot have jurisdiction over Tanzania. However, there is something which surprises me uh, from last week and even today. And uh, if you allow me, uh, I would like to raise it. Sure. Go ahead, Minister. Yeah, you know, the, 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 the lawyer of Nandipa, uh, who entered this fray uh, with pomp and ceremony and introduced as an international uh, 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 law expert, mm. mentioned something that I stole, I am surprised why it's not being challenged by our own lawyers, by the judge, and even by you, uh, the media itself. Mm. He said the, 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 the embassy of one country in another country uh, is not, not regarded as the, the, the sending country. In, in simple language, 
that the embassy of South Africa in Tanzania, inside that embassy, is not regarded as South African soil. It still confuses me because I grew up as an activist knowing that, that when people run away from their countries, they run to the nearest embassy and they can't be arrested there because they are regarded to be in another country and only police of that other country can take action. This matter was not ventilated and I'm surprised why, because the defense lawyer repeated it no less than three times last week, Thursday, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, that's why I'm raising it now. Why is it not being ventilated? Because to me, I believe it's such an important issue. Yeah, certainly, Minister. That's actually one of the conversations that we had here in studio off air, though. And that is, if you look at, for instance, one of the matters of uh, Edwin Snowden, one of the popular um, cases of a whistleblower, Edwin Snowden, is that he actually found refuge at, at embassies. But, Minister, now that we are speaking about embassies as well as um, the commissions, the court finding that it cannot rely on our High Commissioner's um, um, evidence as well, and that has now been thrown out of the court, and all also, the other one is that this, this was actually a disguised extradition and um, South Africa was willing participants in it, even though it was through the instruction of uh, the Tanzanian government of how they would want to see this deportation taking place. Well, Aldrin, throughout this case, we in, in Home Affairs, the department that is responsible for bringing Nandi here, you'll realize that we did not rush to Tanzania. We were called in. Uh, it is the police who went there. And uh, thereafter, we heard that the Tanzanians have declared uh, these people uh, undesirable uh, uh, in their country. They've pro prohibited, rather, immigrants in their country and that they must be collected and that they will only hand them over to Home Affairs officials, immigration officials, and no other authority including the police and the army and their vehicles and their flights, because that will be tantamount to rendition. So we were responding simply to what Tanzanians have decided on their soil, and uh, we responded accordingly. We were not aware that what we are doing maybe is something outside the law, because as far as we are concerned, Tanzanians have got the full rights to decide on what must happen to people who enter their country illegally. And they took a decision that they are prohibited and they want them out of their country uh, 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 within three days and they can only hand them over to immigration officials. Imagine if we refuse and say, no, we can't go there, we can't do it. I'm sure everybody will be condemning us. So the fact that the judge regarded this as a disguised deportation, I mean, a, 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 a extradition is not something that we have planned. We're just acting as we thought Tanzanian uh, authorities have uh, uh, on the base of what Tanzanian authorities have decided. Mm. All right, Minister, thank you so much for giving us your time. We really do appreciate it, and we'll come back to you as well as the story unfolds. Uh, Dr. Aaron Mozwaledi there, the Home Affairs Minister, uh, responding to uh, the judgment handed down there in the Free State High Court in Bloemfontein, having dismissed uh, the application by Dr. Nandi Pama Kutumana, uh, where she has argued that her arrest in Tanzania was unlawful.